Hello and welcome to another R graph gallery tutorial here at the Data Digest. Today we will discuss ridgeline plots in R which you can create with the geom ridgeline and geom density ridges functions. A ridgeline plot, formerly called joyplot, allows you to study the distribution of a numerical variable for several groups. For example, here you see the density distribution of the temperature of Lincoln, Nebraska for 12 months of the year 2016 and Fahrenheit. In a previous video about the geom density function, I explained how you can accomplish that for the diamond dataset, where we compare the distribution of diamond prices according to their quality. This is not the best way to compare multiple distributions. We can increase the transparency or stack them. But using the ridgeline functions is an even better way to produce a more comparable chart. After showing you the basic function arguments, we will look at different shapes and bin sizes. We will discuss different ways to color the areas under the curve, especially in a cyclical or alternating pattern. I will show you how to add quantile lines or how to do quantile coloring. Adding the actual data points to the distribution is often a good idea, so I will show you different methods to jitter points into or below the graph. We could of course flip the chart with the coordinate flip function or use the geom vertical ridge line. I will briefly discuss the ggRidges theme that comes with the package and is a good improvement on the basic ggplot theme. And in the end, I will show you some more advanced examples like the movie length distribution of the last century, voting pattern distributions over the last 30 years in Catalonia, the Poisson distribution with different values of lambda for a sample size of 10 trials, the height distribution of Australian athletes for different sports split by sex, in case you never heard of netball, this is how it's supposed to look, and before seeing the dataset I didn't even notice sport existed. These graphs were made using the ggRidges library, which is a ggplot2 extension and thus respects the syntax of the Gramov graphics and can be used like any other geom function. You can install the package from Crane and I will link to some tutorial websites in the description. This package was created by Klaus Wilkie, who also wrote a book called The Fundamentals of Data Visualization and you can check it out for free online. As always, most of the examples come from the amazing R graph gallery by Jan Holz. Feel free to jump to the sections you are most interested in, timestamps are in the description below and are visible when you hover over the time bar of this video. Let's start with the basic geom ridgeline function arguments. With the help function, you see which aesthetics are mandatory. So we need an x, a y and a height variable. Let's create a dummy data frame D with x values, y values and height values. We repeat 1 to 5 3 times and then 0, 1 and 2 5 times. Instead of producing the y values with 3 repeat functions, we can use a shortcut where the sequence 0 to 2 is repeated 5 times each. Now we have the D data frame with the following values, but if we use the ggplot function for D as data and the aesthetics x for x, y for y and height for height, we get the following result when we use the geom ridge line function. This is because we have several height values for the same x value. So for 3 we have 3 but also 4. And then it tries to plot 3 and 4 and connect it with the ridge line. The way to solve this is to use the group argument and then specify y as different kinds of groups. And now for the first group of y values that start at 0, it plots 0, 1, 3, 4 and 0 again and connects it with the ridge line. And then it repeats the same for the next group starting at 1 and then another group starting at 2. In most cases we don't know the height argument beforehand, but we want to generate the density function of a numeric value. For this we use the geom density riches function, but when the height is given then we only get a result when we specifically say that the stat equals identity. Then the geom density riches function works properly. Let's look at the diamonds data set where we have over 50,000 values of prices for diamonds based on the cut, the color, the weight or clarity. Here are different ways how you can visualize the distributions with the geom density function. You can increase the alpha value to increase transparency, you can stack them or you can use facet wrap to see the distribution in different windows. And for facet wrap it's often good to use seam legend position equals none because you have the category in the title of the individual plots. If we use the geom density ridges function it will separate the individual patterns and distributions of different prices in a very neat way. And again we should add the theme legend position equals none because the categories are giving on the y-axis. There is a geom density riches function 2 with the only difference being that it closes the area so it adds the line at the bottom of each distribution. This is the normal geom riches density function and the 2 version just adds a line at the base. 
You can improve the chart by using scale y discrete and scale x continuous functions to get rid of some extra spacing. So with the expand 0, 0 for the y, you get the following. And with the x, you also remove a little bit of extra space that's unnecessary. Let's talk about another function argument of geom density ridges, the rel min height argument. The trailing tails can be cut off using the rel min height aesthetics. This aesthetic sets a percent cutoff relative to the height point of any of the density curves. So if we use 001, it cuts out anything that's below 1% of the top height of the distribution. And if you increase this, you cut off more and more of the outlier values of the distribution. This is how 0.1 would look like. I already mentioned that the legend is redundant and it can be removed with the seam legend function, setting it to none. But that is actually not necessary because there is a show legend argument inside the geom density function that can be set to false and will produce the same result. Let's talk about the scale argument. One represents the natural distribution and if you set it to 0.5 you reduce it by half and if you set it to 4 you increase the distribution. So that's a way you can play around with it to make it more or less comparable. There's another argument called panel scaling and if you set that to true then each density curve exactly touches the next higher baseline of the other species. And if you set it to false then the scaling is calculated separately for each panel. You can change the shape of the distribution by using the stat equals bin line argument and then you turn it into bins like in a histogram. If you use the bin line stat, it's advised to explicitly state the bin size. So if we turn this to 10, it will group more broad price points into bigger bins. And if you increase this number, you will get more and more details of the distribution. Sometimes we would like to have the area under a ridge line not filled with a single solid color, but rather with colors that vary in some form along the x-axis. This effect can be achieved with the gradient functions that exist for the geom ridge line and the geom density ridges functions. For this example, we create another dummy data frame where the x-values are shifted by 0.3 for the different y-values that start at 0, 1 and 3, and then the fill is calculated by adding x and y-values together. This is how it would look if we don't use the Viridis package, where we can add the extra scale fill Viridis D function. But with this function, we get some nicer color palettes for our purposes. With the direction 1 or minus 1, you can change at which point the coloring should start. And then with the guide equals none, you could get rid of the scale. And then there are different color palettes to choose from. Option D is the default, and with setting it to A, we get some magma coloring. B stands for inferno, and C represents some plasma, and E is CVDIS. If you want the color to represent a certain x value, you have to use the geom density riches gradients function. And here for the Lincoln weather data set, I show some variables like the date, the mean temperature in Fahrenheit, and the month. And now we get 31 different values of mean temperatures for that day in January, and we can plot the density where different colors used for different temperature. For this, we have to specify that on the x-axis we want the temperature, on the y-axis we want the months to be grouped, and then the fill argument needs to be the stat of x. With scale equals three, we increase the distribution size a little bit, and with rel min height, we reduce some outlier distributions. It is possible to fill the ridge line plots with alternating colors. You can make use of the scale fill cyclical functions and simply provide colors for the values argument. Then the geom density ridges function will cycle through the specified values and color them in an alternating pattern. There's also an option to add quantile lines or do some colorings based on probabilities. If we use the stat density ridges function, we can specify that quantile lines equals true and then get the median and the first and third quartile lines within the distribution. You can state exactly how many quantiles you want to see to, and set this to 2 or 10. And you can also specify where exactly you want to see the quantiles at, at which distributions. So cutting off the bottom 2.5% and the top 2.5%. And then it's good to set the alpha 2.7 to see lines that might be covered by other distributions. There's also a way to specifically color the quartiles. We say that the fill is supposed to be a factor that's calculated based on the stat 
quantile and then use stat density riches again, specify that the geome is density riches gradient and then we have to calculate cumulative probability. So there's an argument for stat density ridges that says if calc ECDF is true, then stat density ridges calculates an empirical cumulative distribution function and returns a variable ECDF and a variable quantile. Both can be mapped onto aesthetics. We can use the same approach to highlight the tails of the distributions. For this you state where the quantiles are supposed to be and then with the scale fill manual you can give the legend a name like probability, choose certain colors and then labels within the legend. And here's another option how you can color the distribution. We can calculate the distance from the middle distribution called tail probability. And then the further you are from the middle point, the brighter you get and the closer you are to the center, the darker you get. And this is now based on a gradient and not split into four quartiles. Next, I will show you how you can add points to the distribution within the geom density riches function. There's an argument called jittered points. And if you set it to true, it will put in the points into the distribution. You can also use position equals rain cloud to make the points appear below the density distributions. And by setting alpha to value below one, you make it more transparent and see points from the distribution above. You can also simulate a rug below the distribution by specifying a shape like this pipe symbol and then use position points jitter as function to specify a small width and no height. With the height zero, you force the shapes to be on the lines of the different species. Otherwise they would be all over the place. It's also possible to color the point that we jittered into the distribution. You can use a different shape, fill and color for the different species to get a triangle, square and circle. You can also add the quantile lines again and specify certain values for the vertical line, color or size, and then choose position rain cloud to plot the points and the lines below the distribution. If you ever want to show the ridge line in a vertical manner, you can use the geom v ridge line function, but then instead of height, your data frame needs to have a width, because now we're not going up, but we're going sideways. If you don't have a data frame with specified width, but only numerical values where the density distribution needs to be calculated, you have to specify widths at double dot density double dot, and then within the geom v ridge line function, specify stat equals y density, and then you get a plot like this. Another even more simple way would be just to do everything as before and then add the coordinate flip argument, which just flips x and y axis. Within the GG ridges package, there's already a theme ridges function built in that will turn this kind of graph into this. And if you don't want to show the legend, just set show legend to false and you get a graph like this, which is already quite a neat looking graph compared to this one. A few more things we can do to improve the charts. We can remove the excess space on the x and y axis with these two functions. Then within the theme ridges function, we can set grid to false to get rid of the vertical lines. And with center axis labels set to true, we can put the x and y axis labels into the center. Let's finish off with some advanced examples. If you install the ggplot2movies package, you get a movies data set with many movies that were created in different years that have a length variable. Here we set the rel min height to 0.03 to remove some outliers from the distribution and the size should also be reduced otherwise the lines get too thick to see anything useful. And then on the x-axis we set the limits from 0 to 200 minutes. With expand 00, 0 we get rid of excess space and then we make use of the scale by reverse function to get the order from the smallest to the biggest here and with breaks we can set certain access points. Next we look at an example of Catalan elections where over the different years they had the option to choose the independent or the unionist party and here we fill the different distributions with a year and the option and then make use of the scale fill cyclical function to introduce alternating colors for unionists from light to dark and in the party from dark to light. So you specify four different values and you use two different labels and breaks. In the next example, we simulated the Poisson distribution with different values for lambda, so the mean going from one to five. So here 10 times we simulated a value 
from the Poisson distribution with a mean of 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So sometimes these values get bigger and bigger. Then we use stat equals bin line within the geom density riches function to get a shape like a histogram. And we specify the bin width to be 1 instead of saying how many bins we want to see. Again, we use scale fill cyclical to alternate the coloring. We get rid of the grid within the theme riches function and the rest of the code specifies certain labeling and breakpoints on the x-axis or the y-axis. And in the last advanced example, we show the actual data points as a rug where we specify the shape. We use position points jitter again, color male and female sex for different athletes. So you see water polo was only played by male Australians and netball and gymnastics only by females. And you can see the overlap for certain track and field sports, the difference for athletes within tennis. And you see that in rowing, you have eight rowers with a big body size and one small person that gives the rhythm and the direction during the race. I hope you found this tutorial useful and learned something about ridge lines and the GG Ridges package. Check out the links in the description below and see you for our next video here on the Data Digest channel.